Hey everyone, this is Johnny Five. This is my next video on the Toyota Hilux, the 1972 Toyota Hilux, uh, with a Tesla motor. And on this video, I'm going to be going over what I'm doing for the battery system. Uh, as you can see, this is a BMW i3 94 amp hour, uh, 33 kilowatt hour ish pack. Um, and I went ahead and just retained the entire battery pack and actually got it to fit in between the frame rails, which is pretty cool. Um, so I was able to utilize the entire box as is. So uh, there's a couple things I did change on it. Um, I did change the contactors and the whole contactor box area, uh, mainly because the contactors in this thing they could probably take, I mean, they're rated to do 400 amps, obviously, for the for the i3 motor. But since this motor takes 700 amps, uh, I wasn't feeling too confident with leaving those stock contactors in there. So I switched out the contactors um, with some bigger ones that can take up to 1,000 amps. And then I also switched out the BMS. And the BMS that I went with was a dilithium. And the dilithium is... A fully programmable uh, BMS that can be stacked. Um, it can go be as little as I believe four cells up to 96 cells. Uh, so very very cool little system. Um, I could have used the stock BMS that these come with, and I could have used uh, it's called a Simp BMS, um, which is basically a, a CAN controlled deal that uh, talks to the stock BMS, but. It kind of left me without some uh, things that I like about the dilithium. So I went ahead and went with the dilithium. And yes, this does entail a bunch of wiring. I have to go through and rewire all of, the, all of these modules, but I do this every day at work, so it's not a big deal. All right, so with that in mind, uh, let's take a look at what I've done and what I still have to do on this battery pack to get it ready to do some burnouts. <laughs> all right, let's check it out. All right, so I want to go over um, what I did differently on this battery pack and uh, show you guys what um, what it, I think it's going to take to run a Tesla motor with this battery pack. So basically, I started off with uh, switching the contactors, and what I did was I used some GV 200 MAs from uh, from our shop, EV West. And basically these are two uh, contactors that are economized, internally economized. And what that means is the contactor itself has a little uh, a little chip in it, a little uh, processor deal to where it'll latch the contactor at whatever amperage it needs to latch. And then after that, it'll back the amperage down on the contactor uh, coil to uh, minimize heat and uh, just energy loss while the contactors latch. So basically, it's a way that it saves itself and it uh, prolongs the life on the contactor itself. Because otherwise, if it doesn't, and it just latches and it holds with all that amperage, then it eventually burns out and, um, and that's not good. So that's the GV200MA uh, contactors. There, there is another number, I believe it's the PA, that one is externally economized, and what that one is is literally just a contactor without any logic, nothing in it. And some systems require that because the controller itself on the motor will take care of latching the contactor and then backing the amperage off until uh, until the coil inside is happy and not overheating. So that's what I went with because these can take up to a thousand amps, and that's really good. Whereas the other ones on the stock contactor box, uh, they could take about 400 amps. And uh, this motor in particular takes a little over 700 amps to at full throttle. So not really, wasn't really comfortable using the stock contactors there. Uh, so I put those in place to make sure that those don't melt down. And then I went with a dilithium BMS and like I said before, I could have actually just used the stock BMS with the stock modules and that would have been really easy. Um, but that doesn't give me all the control that this thing can and uh, I can't monitor it as well uh, as what this can do. Um, 
I say that, but I'm sure you can at you know at some to some degree. But I just feel a lot more comfortable using one of these because uh, because we have them, and that's something else we have in the shop. And to give a little bit of detail on how these work, you can go from four cells up to 96 cells, and you basically have the dilithium master, and then below it are the uh, are the satellites and the satellites are basically added as you add uh, modules to your battery pack so if you have a 24s battery pack then just a master will work if you have let's say a 48s battery pack or higher then you start adding satellites to it and basically that's just a repeat of of what the master is so you just start stacking them up to 96s on the modules and that's how that works so it's pretty simple and each one of these has a uh, LTC1 and an LTC2 and basically each LTC has up to 12 cells of uh, monitoring and then each LTC also has up to five uh, thermistors or thermistors as we call them and we're able to monitor that on each LTC there are two LTCs per module, and that's basically how you do it. You, you keep stacking these things, uh, like I said before. So uh, it's pretty simple. You have a cell zero or cell negative, which is your negative most on your module. And then you build it up, one, two, three, four, you know, up to 12, which is pretty, pretty simple system, pretty cool. Um, so that's how that works, and that's what I'm doing. So I'm about halfway through this right now. Um, Actually, literally half. I've done four of these modules total. I have four more to go. And then uh, after that, I'll be able to put this together um, for good, hopefully, and be done with this battery pack because this right here is the most complicated pain in the butt part of this whole truck is right here. And once this is done, everything else goes quick and hopefully this truck will go quick too with that. <laughs> That's cheesy. All right, so I wanted to show how I'm actually wiring this BMS up. Uh, basically, I'm going from module to module, and I'm doing a uh, 12S harness. And I actually got kind of lucky here because each one of these modules is exactly 12 cells. And each one of the LTCs on the BMS is also uh, set up for 12 cells. So uh, in this case, I'm basically wiring each LTC to each module and that's uh, including the thermistors. And so all I'm doing is I'm cutting the old plug off of the, of the uh, module here and I'm directly wiring the harness into the module. And basically what I have here in my hand, the BMS harness tester. And basically it is exactly what it says. And what you do is you take your voltmeter and as you're putting this together and wiring this all up, uh, each cell that I wire into the BMS, I check it. And basically, what you do is you go from cell zero, which is the negative most on the battery, and you go to cell one. So you do your negative on your, uh, on your voltmeter, and then you go to cell one with your positive, and that basically will read out the voltage on the first cell, and that should be uh, roughly 3.7 volts, that's a nominal voltage for lithium. Uh, yours could be a little higher, could be a little lower. Uh, depends on, you know, where your battery's sitting at. So anyway, cell zero to cell one, it's gonna be 3.7 volts, let's say. And then when you wire, as you're wiring it up, you should see that an even increase on each cell. So, you know, 3.7, 7.4, 11, 11, so on and so forth. And basically, the way that I do it is I go from cell zero to cell one, or cell negative most to cell one, and I make sure that it's 3.7 volts. And then my cell one to cell two uh, is how I check it again. So basically what I do is I move my negative on my voltmeter and I go to cell one, and I put my positive on cell two, and I should see again 3.7 volts. And then, I put my negative on cell two, my positive on cell three. Once again, I should see 3.7 volts and so on and so forth as I go up. 
that's a really easy way to do it, to be able to make sure that you're actually grabbing the right uh, cell taps and making sure that you're actually uh, not building up any odd voltages or anything. And then, of course, if you leave your voltmeter negative on cell zero and you just use your positive and go up at this, uh, it's going to be, you know, evenly uh, increasing in voltage. So that's basically it. That's this is the most complicated part is this uh, getting these cell taps all wired up. And then the thermistor is a pretty easy. I don't know if you can see them here, those, those are the, the yellow wires there. Those, you just grab the two wires that go to the thermistor, or thermistor, whatever you want to call it. Um, you grab those two wires, and on the LTC, there are a thermistor 1, thermistor 2, and basically it goes top, bottom, thermistor 1, top, bottom, thermistor 2, and so on and so forth. Uh, if you wire one of those wrong, don't worry, nothing's gonna blow up, as far as I understand. <laughs> um, it's just, it's all it's doing is checking resistance, so that's, you'll be okay there. But importantly, make sure you get that right. As long as that's right, then you're good to go. So over here, really the big rule of thumb on this, these things is, make sure that your entire battery is wired together as far as your, uh, your main cabling the series on the uh, modules. Make sure you, that you do that first before plugging any of these things in. Um, and you wanna do that because if you have a module that has an odd amount of cells going into an LTC and you have like, let's say, uh, you have eight wires coming off of one module and you have uh, four more coming off the next module, if you were to plug that in, and you didn't do your main series uh, on your modules themselves, then you're gonna smoke one of these things. So, again, in my case, I'm pretty lucky. I have a module per uh, LTC, and that makes it really easy, so I, I actually can't hurt the thing because I don't have a negative jumping to the next module uh, outside of the uh, series here. So, just keep that in mind when you put these together. Just a nice rule of thumb is just make sure that all your modules are uh, put together and wired uh, as far as the big cabling goes before you connect these things. And that's it. It's pretty straightforward and uh, easy to do. So basically there's a bunch of uh, inputs and outputs on this uh, master. And of course, uh, your 12 volts to the uh, BMS itself. And you have a couple of other things here. And all, there's really not a whole lot going on here. You have your serial port here, which you can pretty much barely see. And you plug in, uh, there's an eighth inch serial jack that plugs into there and then it goes to a USB. And that's basically how you read this thing, is through that. And uh, we like to use uh, a program called Putty to be able to see and uh, program these things. And so what you have is your, t your ground, your 12 volts positive. That's how you turn it on. And then you have your loop one and your loop two. And that's basically just a little relay in there that uh, latches as, as long as the BMS is happy with all the cell temps and all the cell taps. Uh, you know, the voltages are within uh, certain parameters and actually you set all that stuff. But anyway, if the BMS is happy, It'll latch that. And basically what we use loop one and loop two for is to uh, enable a charger to start charging. So, and if the BMS is upset about something, it'll break that loop. And uh, whatever you got connected to, it's gonna shut off. And so if you're charging and the BMS is un not happy about a cell being low or a uh, thermistor is too hot or something, it's gonna go ahead and break that loop. and your charger or whatever you got going on is gonna stop doing its thing. So that's what that is. And you got can high and can low. That's for your can bus if you wanna see information on this or talk to it or you know pull any data. And then you have your IPO and your IMO. And what these two are, it's basically like a can deal. And 
it's these two wires, twisted pair, and it goes to the next uh, module below it. And basically what that is, is that's the way that it communicates to the next uh, module, the satellite modules. It's only two wires. It jumps to the next one, jumps to the next one, so on and so forth. That's all it is. So super simple, and that's how that works. This i3 has a uh, AC cooling system on it. So basically, you can see them in here. There's basically a bunch of lines going back and forth on this, uh, more like a more like plates. And basically, there's AC um, freon going through this to chill the battery pack. And I think they mainly use that for uh, DC fast charging because these things can do that. And also probably when you're hammering on the car really hard, or if it's just a hot day like today, um, it's able to cool that battery pack down. And the Freon comes in over here, um, but I'm not using that in that manner. And I don't recommend doing this, but uh, what I'm doing is actually just taking those two lines and I'm welding a couple of barb fittings on it. And I'm putting a little tiny radiator over here, a little water pump, and I'm just going to run coolant through it and have it cool the battery pack like that. It's just a surface down there below here, below the cells that where these lines touch the aluminum casing here to cool it. So it's uh, like a passive cooling type of deal. Uh, but at least I'll be able, to cool, be able to cool the batteries in that manner. And I have 64 thermistors in this whole thing. So that's a lot of temperature monitoring. So I'm not too worried about uh, overheating the battery without knowing. There's a whole lot of temperature monitoring going on. So anyway, that's how I'm doing it. Uh, hopefully I can get this thing done today, maybe tomorrow, button this thing up and be done with that. And then uh, I'm gonna move on to doing probably the axles next and the, uh, and the brakes. So, all right, I think that's it for this one. And uh, thanks for watching. All right, see ya.